Kita tunggu lima minit dulu lah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, nah, uh, kami tag kita deh. Uh, student kami seorang jadi co-host co lah. Okay, pekat kami uh, stop share kami akan lantik. Okay, okay. <coughs> James, are you there? <coughs> yeah, sir. Ah, okay, good, good. <coughs> <coughs> we will start in three minutes. Thank you, everyone. Kami dah boleh share ke? Uh, no. Semenit je, semenit. Okay, okay.
Okay, assalamualaikum and good afternoon. So today our workshop is on a new methodological insight to apply economy through soil analysis by our speaker today, Dr. Zul Haswan. Without further delay, I pass the session to Dr. Zul Haswan. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Fahana. So uh, maybe some of you uh, do not know me. And then some of you might know me. So in brief, uh, my name is Zul uh, Zul uh, I'm one of the lecturer uh, uh, of uh, Eco uh, Faculty Economic and Business. So today, uh, as scheduled, say I'm going to share you the the passion. No. Okay, that pass the host. Moment, how to share? Huh? Okay. All right. So uh, today uh, I would like to share you some of my uh, some of the some of the modern economic uh, econometric technique. So maybe today we just focus on the uh, the threshold anal analysis. So uh, I I will deliver my lecture first. I will uh, explain you. Uh, the introduction of uh, modern economy econometrics uh, in general, because I think it is uh, it is very important for you to know the flow and the standard procedure for you to make an analysis. So the second uh, the second part, then we go then <coughs> we uh, then we will go through uh, the discussion on some method that we can use in order for for us to come up with the. Uh, uh, what do we call that? The threshold analysis. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Let us start with the introduction to modern econometrics. So this is the outline uh, for the introduction. Then, okay, as you know, that econometric is a combination of the knowledge of uh, mathematics, uh, statistics, and then economics. And then normally an economist will use the combination of these three elements uh, to come up with the to come up with the research output and also the uh, economic uh, report. And then it might be useful for the policymaker to make a good decision. Okay, uh, in general, and I think you are well known about this uh, in uh, economics, we have three types of uh, data. The first one is the cross section, uh, cross sectional data, it is more to the constant data or static data. And the second one, we have a types of uh, time series data. So, a time series data include the information of constant and the trend uh, behavior. And then nowadays we have uh, uh, types of data set, so called as panel data. So panel data is a combination of uh, a, com a combine a combination of uh, constant and uh, trend. Okay, so there is uh, there are some advantages and disadvantages uh, if we want to use the cross section data, time series data, and panel data. Okay, uh, for me, it is very subjective for us to identify which one is better. So it actually depends on the, the study, on the research that we want to do. Okay, for cross-sectional data, yes, definitely we can have a big size of observation, but then it neglects the information of the trend. And in economics, we believe on the dynamic, according to what Adam, Adam, Adam Smith said, uh, our economy is died in term of dynamic so that's why uh we need to concern about the time series uh time series data okay normally the time series data uh is preferable in uh microeconomics okay in time series data definitely we can capture the trend behavior but then <laughs> Uh, we have we have some limitation due to data availability, and then if let's say we have the annual data, then definitely 
we deal with the small size of the observation but nowadays we have uh, a lot of technique that suitable to treat the small size observation and in the meantime uh, up to now if annual data it now reached to 40 or more than 40 uh, years already i think it should be enough for us to come up with a robust uh, uh, empiric, uh, empirical conclusion and then sometime uh, uh, we we do also have a monthly and quarterly data but then it's still the pro we will we uh, will face another problem of data availability so not many uh, not many data economic data uh, in the form uh, monthly or quarterly and then nowadays we have panel data a combination of uh, a combination of constant and trend uh, information so definitely we have a big uh, size of observation and we also can uh, include or take into our account uh, the information of trend. But then one of the limitation uh, if we deal with panel data is that the individual specific effect is absent or weak. <laughs> okay, uh, let us go through to the let, let us go through to the uh cross data uh, the, the cross data cross sectional data analysis. Uh, these are types of uh, technique that we can use uh, correlation, OLS, and different and different differences, uh, regression. And for me, uh, the cross sectional data, uh, the advantage of the cross sectional data is the data that you had you have collected. That makes your output of the research become more significant and valuable. Okay, so. Second one, time series. Okay, time series. We have a lot of procedure or technique. Okay, first unit root, unit root test. Since we deal with the trend, uh, a long time period, the, a series of data. So the unit root test is one of the is one of the technique that we want to know the behavior. Either has a root, has a unit root, or stat stationary at the first different. And some of the Good paper also just only use the unit root test to come up with a good uh, research output. Okay, and then another one, uh, after we go through, after we understand the nature of the data, either uh, got a unit root or not, then normally we proceed with the co-integration test. Okay, the co-integration technique here, we have, uh, we do have <coughs> uh, multiple, <coughs> multiple uh, techniques. So first one is the F test the ordinary test one and then the Johansson and Ducilius co-integrator step uh, co-integration test and we also have the error correlation term model uh, we also have ARDL bound test and then the latest one we have recursive uh, ARDL bound test and then rolling windows uh, ARDL uh, these are the two new things nowadays uh, they come uh, they try to come up with another dimension and in order to uh, to come up with the uh, the co-integration conclusion, okay. But then uh, the co-integration test actually cannot give some uh, some uh, significant information in terms of the 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 relationship and also the uh, what do we call that uh, the magnitude. So in the time series, in the time series analysis, what we can do here first is the causality test. Okay, the causality test is to test the the general relationship between the a pair of variable. Okay, and then in general we do have a Granger causality test. We have VCM, we have VAR, and we have Todaya Momoto causality test. And one of the weaknesses to use causality test is that we are unable to capture the magnitude impact of the uh, the impact, uh, of the independent variable to cause the dependent variable. So in order to do that, we have a few techniques. The first is that in very general, the basic one, we can use the linear estimation. So linear estimation, it has a few techniques that we can use to deal with uh, uh, time series analysis in order, in order for us to capture the magnitude uh, impact of the independent variable. 
on the dependent variable. So the first one is the, the normalized equation. We can retrieve the normalized equation from the Johansson and Juscelius co-integration test just now. So other than that, we can use uh, dynamic OLS, fully modified OLS, and ARDL, ARDL, UECM. Okay, this one is uh, in the perspective of linear estimation. Okay, other than that, we can look through another dimension, so-called uh, dynamic dynamic estimation. The dynamic esti uh, sorry, the non-linear estimation. So, a uh, types of technique that we can use is first the NARDL. So, normally we call it as an asymmetric uh, asymmetric estimation uh, asymmetric uh, estimation. So, another one we have multi threshold non-linear ARDL. So this one is one of the uh, technique that we can use for threshold analysis. We will look through in detail on this technique later. So the last one is the quadratic model. So the quadratic model also can be used to capture the uh, threshold behavior or threshold effect. We also will look through on uh, this matter in detail later. So nowadays, so we have, uh, before this we have, uh, linear and non-linear and nowadays to deal with ai then we have another uh, technique the latest technique ma uh, machine learning algorithm so currently the most stable uh, the most stable uh, technique that we can use is first is dynamic and rdl and the first one is the kernel least square these are the two things that uh, currently is quite stable uh, robust for us to use uh, for our uh, for our empirical uh, study. So, in conclusion, for time series, <clears throat> we need to know. Uh, we need to go through this procedure. Okay, we need to go through to this procedure. If let's say we want to do a time series uh, uh, analysis, okay. First, we need to do a unit root test, and after that, if the unit root test. Uh, match with the characteristic for whatever method that we want to use for co-integration test, then we can, can proceed with the co-integration test. So if let's say our model that we are suggested is not co-integrated in the long run, then definitely the thing that we can do, we can do the Granger causality either BAR or Toda Yamamoto. So how about in the case that we, our model statistically, uh, we find that uh, it's our model is co-integrated in the long run. So first, we can use normalized equation. Okay, second, this is the most uh, important part that you need to do. You need to do a non-linearity test. If last time we do not have uh, a new technique for non-linear. So non-linearity test is not really important, but nowadays, uh, maybe if you want to submit your paper in a journal, they will ask this question. Uh, where is your non-linearity test? Because the non-linearity test, why it is important? It is a test to determine whether your model and your data is suitable for linear estimation or non-linear estimation. In other words, what, what, what I want to say, what I'm trying to say here is that up to now, due to the latest finding, due to the latest model, actually we can choose simply choose linear and non-linear as that. We need to come up with the statistical test to show that, to prove that the model and our data is suitable for linear or non-linear. So if let's say the non-linear really, uh, the non-linearity test suitable for linear suggests for us to use linear and then this other, uh, the model that we can use first, dynamic OLS, fully modified OLS, ARDL or ARDL UECM. Okay, but then if let's say the statistic suggests us to use non-linear non -linear, then we need to use non-linear estimation what are the types of technique that we can use here first uh uh narl asymmetric uh asymmetric uh estimation second one multi threshold narl we will look uh through this letter dynamic NARDL, uh, kernel least square, as I mentioned to you. 
kernel least squared is one of a non-linear uh, approach. But it's considered as one of the AI approach. <laughs> okay, now we proceed to panel data statistics, uh, panel data analysis. So we go to the static one. So in panel data analysis, we have static and dynamic due to panel data has uh, can deal with constant information and trend information. So in this case, uh, if let's say we are interested to use static or else, what can I say? Our available data is just only suitable for static analysis for panel data. So what we can do, we can use uh, two types of technique, first linear and non-linear. Linear, we can go for pool OLS, random effect uh, model, fixed effect model, different and indifference uh, regression. This is one of the latest technique. So we can use a uh, mean group. We can use common uh, correlated effect mean group and augmented mean group. Okay, I will explain uh, a bit later when we go to the procedure. If let's say we want to do a static analysis in panel data. So for nonlinear, we can use threshold. Yes, today we will go through uh, a types of threshold model that we can use. And then we also have a fixed effect threshold regression. And then the last one, we can also use different and differences nonlinear regression. <laughs> so this is the flaw. Okay, this is the procedure that we need to go through. First, we need to do a cross-section de uh, cross dependent test. Same as the non-linear, the non-linearity test, now that if let's say you want to do, a, you want to use a panel data technique for your research, you need to start with the cross-section dependent test. Okay, so from that, uh, due to that, uh, from that, then we can uh, proceed with the non-linearity test. Okay, if let's say, the non-linearity test suggests you to use linear, you can use these types of um, uh, technique. First, homogeneous or heterogeneous estimation without cross-section uh, cross dependent uh, factor. Okay, first, we can use pool or LS random uh, effect or fixed effects. Second, uh, mean group. And the third one, uh, DID regression. And for your information, <coughs> uh, for homogeneous and heterogeneous static model, it is we just not we just not only have the pool OLS, uh, random effect and fixed effects. We can also use a, a mean group static model. Okay, for heterogeneous with a cross section dependent estimation, if let's say the statistic to show that our model have the problem of CD or cross section dependent, then we just can have we just can use this uh, model CCE MG and AMG. Okay, how about if let's say the non linearity non linearity test suggests us to use non linear? So if that's so we can use the heterogeneous estimation. So what, what alternative that we have? Threshold regression, fixed effect threshold regression, and then different and differences, uh, nonlinear regression. So, okay. So we proceed to the last part of uh, panel data analysis, dynamic. <laughs> so since we have, uh, since the panel data also, con uh, also consists with uh, trend, the T, the period, then we can actually uh, use uh, or employ any dynamic, uh, what do you call it, any dynamic uh, technique. So definitely, if we concern, if we uh, include a factor of period or trend, then we need to use, uh, then we need to do a unit root test. So bear in mind, in panel data, we have a type of unit root test. A man, uh, a man uh, model for unit root test. Uh, example like homogeneous unit root test, heterogeneous unit root test, heterogeneous with uh, cross section unit root test. Meaning to say that 
we cannot simply use uh, a type, any type of unit to test that we want. Actually, we need to test again. We need to test the, the unit root. Uh, yeah, a unit root test, uh, a unit root test. Uh, either that can deal with cross section or non cross section. Uh, Shahzad, I will share. Uh, I will let you know the software letter when we do, when we discuss about the time series and uh, about the uh, what do we call that uh, threshold analysis discussion letter. So for same goes to the panel uh, co integration test. We have. Uh, hetero het, uh, homogeneous uh, co integration test. Co, co integration is more to homogeneous. Second one, we have Pedroni. Pedroni is for, uh, is for heterogeneous uh, co integration test. And nowadays, we have Westerlund, Westerlund uh, co integration test to deal with co integration test with uh, cross section problem. Okay, so what are the techniques that we can use in order for us to capture the, the magnitude impact or the conclusion uh, of our analysis in uh, in dynamic uh, time uh, the, the dynamic panel data analysis? So in linear, we can use GMM. The GMM suitable for short uh, panel data. So other than that, we can use panel OLS, panel fully modified OLS. Mean group, uh, we have mean group in uh, in, stat in the nature of static or mean group in the nature of uh, dynamic. We have PMG, okay, pool mean group, and we have dynamic fixed attack model. We have a dynamic CCEMG. We can retrieve it from the Westerlund core integration test. And then the last one, we have CSARDL. Okay, for the nonlinear uh, <coughs> technique, so we can use panel and RDL to, if let's say we are interested on asymmetric, uh, asymmetric uh, analysis or asymmetric uh, information. So another one, uh, dynamic panel threshold. So up to now, just only a dynamic panel threshold that we can uh, we can do a test of a non-linearity test for panel and RDL. Up to now. Uh, it's quite. Uh, there is no command yet to test the nonlinearity test for panel and RDL unless we have time to do it manually. Okay. Uh, before we proceed to our big agenda today, so these are the flow that we need to follow in order for us to uh, to. Uh, to conduct the dynamic panel data analysis. As usual, uh, to conduct a panel data, data analysis, it is very important for us to start with, to check the cross-section uh, cross section dependent test. Okay, from that, we can choose uh, which uh, model that's suitable with our model and with our data and with our sample. So if let's say homogeneous or heterogeneous, Without okay, without cross section dependence, what we can do, what we can use, what we can employ is core uh, co integration. Bear in mind, the core integration is homogeneous core integration test, not heterogeneous. Okay, so we can use Pedroni co integration test. So, uh, we need to test again uh, the nonlinearity test. If let's say we can, if let's say the statistic uh, shows that. Our model is suitable for linear. Then uh, the technique that we can use: panel OLS, panel fully modified, uh, fully modified OLS, NG, PNG, dynamic fixed effect model. So how about nonlinear? We can use NARDL and dynamic panel threshold. So if let's say <laughs> we find that our data, our model, and our sample uh has a problem of cross section dependent so what we can use for core, uh, for for uh, then for the unit root test we need to we need to use a unit root test that can relax the problem of cross section dependent 
And then for core integration test, up to now, we just have with alone core integration test to deal with, uh, with cross-section uh, cross dependent problem. So again, we need to do a non-linearity test. So if let's say the test, the statistic uh, suggests us to use uh, linear and then a technique that we can use dynamic the dynamic CCMG or CS uh, ARDL. So if let's say the test, the nonlinearity test suggests us to use the uh, nonlinear approach, we can use the panel and ARDL. And also we have the dynamic panel and ARDL too. Hmm. Okay. So far, any question? I I open for any question for five minutes before we proceed to the time uh, for the threshold analysis. So back to the question from uh, Shahzad. Ask me with uh, what software that we can use to do uh, to to do the analysis for cross section uh, time series and uh, time series and panel data. If you ask me, cross section, you still can use. Uh, most preferable, you can use uh, eViews and SPSS. Okay, for time series, uh, eViews is still preferable. For panel, then data is more preferable. Okay, and some other technique in panel data, you need to use MATLAB. Okay, uh, some comments still not available in uh, in data. So that one uh, require uh, some advanced techniques in Econometric in order for us to use the MATLAB. Uh, Fakir, okay, I will show you the I will show you the slide uh, later. Any other question before we proceed to <laughs> our business today? No. What about panel quantile regression in panel? Okay, the panel quantile regression actually, uh, yeah, I not include it in the in this uh in this slide, but actually the panels is categorized as linear, not non-linear, because uh the pan uh, the quantile is uh treat a level uh any level uh is uh is to treat the behavior for of our in de our dependent variable at certain level, so the nonlinear uh, to treat uh, our what do we call that the our independent variable in certain level. That's why. So for whatever uh, approach that you for whatever approach that you want to do at uh, independent variable side, either for example to check. Uh, the threshold effect at the uh, independent side in the in independent levels uh, in the independent variable side that one still considered as linear but then if dependent variable like quantile is still considered as the uh, linear estimation okay <coughs> all right can i can i proceed to our main business today <coughs> Okay. Okay. Let us proceed with our business today. So fast, so good. Huh? If I am too fast, you let me. You let you let me know. I will lower my key. Can you suggest me a book that briefly explain econometrics model? For econometrics, we do not. Uh, normally, we will not use one single book. We will use multiple books, and then if you want to know the technique, the new tech, especially the new technique, normally it is not in the book yet. No, you need to refer to the articles in a journal, but then you need to choose a good journal, okay? Because uh, nowadays the development of econometric is very fast, so one year can be we can have a multiple uh, new technique like threshold one. So nowadays. We, there are a lot of technique for threshold so you need to you need to you need to you need to uh, update yourself with the the new article in the journal okay now i stop sharing 
Aish. Okay, let us go to our main business today. Okay, it is impossible for me to explain to you in detail theoretically and then practically uh, for this session because for every for each uh, technique actually needs more than two hours to explain theoretically and then uh, in practical. Okay, this one is just in general. I hope that uh, for whatever information that I share you today, you can do a homework. Okay, you try to to do a homework and then try to find uh, additional material for you to look further. And I am also welcome you if let's say you have any question to come and see me, whether to want to ensure your direction is uh, is correct, you are in the right direction or not. I am welcome you to come and see me uh, in my office. You can contact me uh, for an appointment via this email. I'm okay with that. Okay. So it, it is impossible for us to make it in two hours. Okay. Okay. Now we are back to our business. <coughs> okay. Threshold analysis. Uh, before that, okay. I will give you a brief, uh, an, uh, a brief uh, explanation on the threshold analysis, and then we will have a break for for thirty minutes, uh, three uh, three p.m. to three thirty, and then during that time, uh, I will ask my uh, assistant to collect uh, the email, your your email address, in order for me to distribute you the what do we call it the the slide and then the data set and also some uh, file that you need to use it in order for you to install your data i hope that you are uh, you your laptop has already installed the data in order for you to do uh, one and uh, in order for you to do uh, got one technique uh, threshold analysis technique that you, you need to install and use the other file to make it complete Okay, I will give you, you four types of file in order for you to uh, completely uh, do the analysis of uh, threshold analysis. Okay. Okay. As an introduction. Okay. So non-linearity assumption. Sorry. Linearity assumption is not always accurate. Okay. It it's impossible actually uh, applied to be applied in the long run. Yeah. Okay, right? Nonlinear estimation is limited to the symmetrical uh, relationship between increase or decrease in the uh, exogenous variable and endogenous variable in the relationship. Okay, but then uh, a nonlinear assumption overcome the limitation of linear assumption by identifying an asymmetrical relationship between exogenous and endogenous variable. Okay, the threshold model estimate the behavior of economic variable at different level of uh, exogenous variable. Okay, again, so before we want to choose the model that we want to employ for our research, again, we need some statistical uh, test to support our decision. Either we want to use the linear estimation, linear model or non-linear model. Same goes to the uh, threshold. There is a test for us to do first whether the threshold, whether the threshold uh, model is suitable with our model, our research, our variable and also our sample. So I'll give you an example. The threshold actually exists in the real world. That's why nowadays, if let's say you want to produce or you want to prepare a manuscript to publish in a good journal, for especially linear is quite difficult for us to sell. But then it still can be uh, can be used can be employed if let's say we document the statistical test to say that in this case our model our sample model is actually suitable for linear then see example like this one 
in reality, it is difficult for us to, to, to have a straight line information, a straight line graph information, am I right? So normally we deal with this, the threshold, the, 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 the graph like this. So when it is not in the form of thread line, definitely there is a certain level, the behavior of our information suddenly change. Okay, example like this graph. Okay, it, this graph telling us that the magnitude, the sign of magnitude is same, but the degree of magnitude uh, going to change at certain level. This is what it means. Okay. Right. Okay, second, I think you are familiar with it. If you, uh, some of you maybe uh, read the journal that use uh, EKC example, right? Normally, uh, they assume the relationship between, uh, what do we call that? Between the uh, exogenous variable and uh, endogenous variable should be in U shape or inverted or in inverted U shape. Okay, like this. Okay. <coughs> All right. So in this case, actually, the, th the threshold is all about uh, to capture the changes of our, uh, the changes behavior of our regression first. And the second one that we need to answer the turning point. Okay. Most of, some of the paper actually focusing on when they use the, okay, we, we will talk about the quadratic letter. The quadratic, you put the normally GDP square, uh, GDP and GDP square, right? So, but then when most of the paper neglect to answer when is the turning point happen? Uh, this is important for us to answer in the paper to make our paper more uh, interesting, okay? So now this uh, we back to our business <coughs> today. Okay, the threshold model we have a types a multiple types uh, model in order for us to do the threshold analysis. First, uh, we uh, we uh, I just list down five. I believe there are some more technique outside there uh, that you need to explore on your own. Okay, so but that today I just give you a brief. Uh, threshold model that you can consider and then try to uh, do your own homework later and definitely i cannot uh, explain you show you uh, show you the step in detail to explain you in detail theoretically and also the, the practical uh, the pra uh, practic the practical thing in order for us to uh, to make a modern uh, a modern econometric analysis, right? I just choose a few and hopefully maybe uh, we have chance later to discuss uh, further, okay? So we have five types of uh, quadratic that I most preferable model model that, uh, that normally I use and consider when I come up with the paper. Up to now, I have publish two paper that use threshold uh, model and then coming soon another three paper okay to use threshold analysis okay now uh these are these are five of the model that you you can consider first is quadratic it's quite famous and popular okay the second one is a uh, threshold regression okay uh the threshold regression can deal with panel analysis uh, the balance and unbalanced data set panel data set we have fixed effect threshold uh, panel analysis, but then in this case, the fixed effect threshold regression, you just, you, this model just can uh, deal with balanced panel data set. Okay, we have dynamic threshold regression and the last one, multi threshold NARDL. Okay, the, this one specifically for time series only. <clears throat> Okay, now we go to the quantile, uh, quant uh, quadratic model. For today, I will not going to uh, share you uh, a hands-on activity for this. Okay, you need you can explore it on your own. Okay, uh, but then I list down how to do it, and I give you the example of the paper that use uh, the quadratic 
correctly and perfectly. Okay, so now we go to this quadratic model. Okay, the turning point. Okay, the quadratic model. You need to uh, actually, uh, if you use the quadratic model, actually you need to show the the changes of uh, the behavior, how it would change. First, second, how about the turning point? You can, you can, uh, you can uh, refer to this paper. Okay. I have screenshot, screenshot, uh, screenshot the result uh, in the next slide. Okay. Maybe some of you are not aware about this. If let's say, normally we use the, okay, example, like that our uh, independent variable, we use GDP and GDP squared in order for us to find the nonlinear relationship. Okay. But then, please be in mind, you will test the problem of multicollinearity. So, in order to uh, in order to avoid uh, that kind of thing happen, you need to do the center of covariate. Okay, the center of covariate is actually okay. You have two uh, two type of variable here, GDP and GDP square, right? You need to remove the mean value in each of the series. So, definitely you're gonna, going to have a negative value. So uh, from that negative value, there is a technique for us to uh, convert it into log value. I will show it later. Okay. And then the nonlinearity test actually, if happen, if let's say both quadratic variable, okay, sorry, not bus, must be significant. Okay, the both quadratic, model must be significant. Example, like I mentioned to you, if you are interested on uh, EKC, EKC model, so you are concerning on two types of independent variable here, uh, GDP and GDP square. Both coefficient for this uh, variable must be significant. Regardless, regardless, the sign is different or the same. Okay, even though, both uh, independent variable we found we find that got same sign it's okay the nonlinear behavior is still there okay if you I recall back to this this is what I mean still have okay still have the nonlinear effect okay but then the sign is yes. Why we use uh why we use the other I cannot hear you. Uh Fahana, can you help me? So Muhammad Masha, why we use uh threshold model regression as I told you just now? No. Uh, why we use the threshold model just now? I told you because uh, in the real world, our information is not in terms of the straight line. Okay. Okay, let us proceed. Okay. So the for now, the second question that we need to answer, the turning point. Okay, most of the paper ignore about this. Okay, but then actually we need to inform the reader where is the turning point. If let's say uh, we found that the two quadratic variable has a different signs or different magnitude, so this is uh, this is the formula that you can use. Example for this paper, you can refer to uh, the page three nine three table six. No worries, I I already screenshot you here. Okay, as you can see here. Okay, as you can see here, this is the formula for the turning point. Okay, example, table six. Okay, we select one uh, model here. Okay, you put the value. Okay, same thing. This paper use EKC. Okay, this paper use EKC. We have GDP and GDP square. Okay, both significant, meaning nonlinear impact exit in our model. Okay, but now the second question that we need to answer here, the turning point. Okay, you see here, EKC Hall turning point here. Okay, now 
we use the value here to uh, and then we use the we use, sorry the, we use the formula here based on the information that we got here we will get this and then this the same value so this is the turning point when the behavior start to change that is another question that we need to answer okay <laughs> okay that is for that is for the quadratic okay quadratic are you okay with that okay let us let us proceed first okay all right so multi threshold uh, now the next one is multi threshold and rdl okay so I use this uh, multi threshold uh, and R RDL in my upcoming paper. I have uh, I used it for three manuscripts. Okay. Manuscript. Okay. So multi threshold and RDL. Yes, can only done with time series analysis. Okay. These are the models. So if you can see here, if you have a good knowledge on the uh, on uh, quantile, right? We form a quantile uh, variable for independent variable, right? In dependent side. But now in this case, we actually compose a quantile variable at the dependent side like this. So if quantile, it should be the this is not x but y. But for multi threshold uh, NARDL, we need to compose okay, our deep independent variable into quantile. Like this one example in my paper, I uh, compose four quantile, uh, four, uh, four threshold, four threshold uh, variable. Okay, from what? Which, uh, from what level? Okay. In what level? 25th, 50th, 75th, and one, uh, 100. What? Percentile. Okay, these are the formula. Well, I give you one paper. Okay, so as I told you, once uh, we compose the threshold variable through quantile uh, approach, this is the Regressor. This is our independent variable for uh, multi threshold. In this case, I use four threshold uh, threshold variable, like this one. Okay, you can refer to this paper. <clears throat> okay, this is the link for this paper. Okay, as you can see here, this paper also have uh, also use four uh, threshold value. So actually, this one actually uh, derived from one independent variable, okay, EN, uh, ENFF. So this paper want to explore more in terms of uh, the threshold effect, okay, got threshold effect or not, okay. In this case, the author composed uh, a single uh, N, a, a single ENFF into another four. Uh, threshold variable for this type of variable okay and then they put in uh, and then they it it become a variable and independent become uh, we have an additional three variable need to uh, analyze so in this case one of the weaknesses of this paper they uh, didn't uh, report the non-linearity test Okay, the non-linearity test is like this. Okay, we have four. We have uh, we have four uh, four new what do we call that independent variable. These four new the what do we call that uh, the can I get my words? Uh, hepatitis. Okay, the non-hepatitis. This four equal to zero. If let's say the what test reject to say our hypothesis is rejected, meaning to say that our model is suitable for non-linear. This is how it uh, conducted. Okay, definitely. 
for this empty and RDL, we can use uh, eViews to use that. So I'm sorry. Uh, in this case, actually, uh, for 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 this session, I cannot share you the step to do it uh, uh, via hands-on because it need times uh, and need more time. I think more than two hours to do it manually. Okay. So maybe next time, if we have an opportunity to conduct a new workshop specifically to discuss MT and RDL for two to three hours, then should be enough. Okay. Okay. For today, uh, <coughs> for today, we I will show you the command and the step to use the threshold regression model. Okay. You can refer to this paper later. This uh, both of the paper, both of this paper are my my paper. Okay, okay. In this uh, for this uh, threshold regression model, okay, as you can see here, okay, this uh, is the the regression, the model suggested by threshold regression model here. Okay, as you can see here, the y is the value for uh the value for threshold here. so i give you example for further understanding okay this is uh my paper as i told you we need to start with the non-linearity test okay if you refer to my paper here this is one of the table i report the non-linearity test the non-linearity test here uh is to show the threshold effect exit meaning to say that what certain point the beha the behavior of my regressor change? This is what it means. At what level? This this is the value. So three point six three four seven is in term of uh in the form of uh natural law. Okay, when we convert to the uh, the absolute value, it equal to this. This is what it means. Okay, <clears throat> example of the non-linearity test. Okay, another thing, instead of to show the statistical number, we can also, what do we call that? Uh, we can also illustrate in, into a graph like this. Okay, how are we going to know that we have a threshold effect or not? If let's say the graph is tangent with the red line here, so we have a threshold effect. Okay. If let's say the graph tangent twice, meaning to say that we have two uh, threshold uh, effect. This is what I mean. But in this case, we just have only one threshold effect. But for your information, in the uh, due to uh, due to the data availability that we have, normally uh, th uh, one tre uh, one threshold is enough, rather than we have two to three uh, two to three threshold. Okay. Okay. Another another threshold effect or non-linearity test. We can also use this. I will show you the example for this, this, and this uh, when we do a hands-on activity. Okay. <clears throat> okay, this is also one of my paper. <clears throat> I use the threshold uh, threshold analysis. So I've also report the threshold effect or the non-linearity test to show that our model cannot be interpreted uh, by using linear estimation. Okay, okay, this is the uh, the example. Okay, the example of the result that we that I found and this is my paper my found to use the threshold analysis okay threshold analysis as you can see here to use this model actually the threshold will split the threshold value will split our observation one of the weaknesses one of the weaknesses to use this model is this you need to be careful okay you need to take a good concern on your degree of freedom here 
Okay, this is the linear estimation. Okay, when we go to regime one, regime two, meaning that there's uh, the threshold variable, the threshold effect, sorry, the threshold effect will split your observation into two. Okay, for uh, regime one, if let's say, the, what will happen to your regression if let's say your, uh, what do we call it? your, uh, your threshold, uh, if let's say the value is below than uh, your threshold value, and then what will happen if let's say above the threshold value, and then you need to take a good care of this, your degree of freedom. If let's say your degree of freedom is below than 30, then your estimation will be questionable due to what? Blue. Okay. So in statistics, we believe that our observation must be at least 30 after you deduct your independent variable. So you need to take a good care about that. You need to give a full, much concentration on that. So it does not mean that if you have 30 observation is enough. No, you need to think about how many observation, how many uh, independent variable that you have. Because in the end of the day, we are not looking on the numbers observation. We are looking on the degree of freedom, how tight is your uh, degree of freedom. This is one of the weaknesses if you use the general threshold regression uh, proposed by Hansen. The <laughs> the advantage, one of the advantage and advantages to use this, you can use unbalanced data set. Okay. And also the balanced one. So after this, I will show you another uh another that one, another what do we call that? Another uh, example for fixed uh threshold regression. Okay. Okay, before we go further to this uh, activity, right? To this activity, I will give you a break about 30 minutes. Okay, I will pass my floor to my student, James, to, uh, to email you the document that you need uh, to do the hands-on activity. Are you okay with that? James, are you there? Yes, yes, doctor. Okay, Fahana, uh, boleh bagi James lah. Okay, I need your cooperation uh, to give uh, us your email in the chat box. Boleh kah, uh, James? Put in the chat box. Okay, you... you... No, no, the, the James already created the Google Drive. Google Drive. Ada kah? Hmm. Ah, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, so inside that one, uh, there is a instruction how to install the uh, threshold uh, uh, the threshold command we just follow the instruction okay once i'm back later i hope that you have already installed and do uh, and allocate the edu file file in the right uh, what do we call it in the right uh, folder okay if you have any question you can ask jam jam can you conduct that one yeah, no problem, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a break for 30 minutes. Thank you. Hi everyone, we will continue at 3.30 p.m. Kita akan sambung 3.30. Uh, please down, install Stata and download all the material in the Google Drive link that shared by James. Dr. Zul will come back at 3.30. Sorry for the inconvenience. Thank you everyone.
Hello, guys. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah, by the way, just now in the Google Drive, the link, uh, when you open it, there are two, uh, there are actually four files, but there is no link for an uh for the download of Stata software, and there's also no no software downloaded downloadable file here because I think probably uh Dr. Zul uh forgot about it, but it's fine. Later on when he comes back, then we'll figure out ways to do it. But anyway, uh, for those who have the Stata uh, software, and just in case you're not sure how to paste the two files that I've mentioned in the chat box just now into your uh, folder, I'll try to show you how to do it step by step. Um, let me share the screen. For those who haven't installed the starter, we just wait for Dr. Zulika. Um, I think so because yeah, because uh, Dr. Zul did not tell me about this any uh before, but uh, um, we'll figure out ways to, to deal with it and see hopefully if we can find any uh free downloadable link for the data. But yeah, uh, I, yeah. I find online cannot. They have to pay or something. Yeah, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, uh, usually for Stata, uh, you need to pay for the for the license. But yeah, but if you are a student in Unimas, I believe uh, I'm not sure whether or not they they have any uh free Stata version for you to to copy and paste it into your PC. Uh, maybe you can check yeah. with them But later on, we'll we'll talk about this. Uh, when Doctor Zhu comes back. Okay. Thank but, you so yeah. much, James. No, it's for fine. your yeah. Uh, but anyway, before that, before uh, Dr. Zhu comes back, I'll share you how to paste the two files into a Stata folder. Okay, let me share the screen here. Can everyone see this uh, folder that I'm showing to you? Yes, yes. Okay, all right, thank you. So here, uh, to come here, you have to first have your Stata um status software available downloaded in your pc you just go to your desktop screen you look for your Stata software icon you look for your Stata icon right click okay and then go to the uh, properties which is the bottom the bottom of the, the option pro properties click on it then you can see uh there's an option there saying file, uh, file manager, I suppose. So when you click that, this is where you get Stata 17. Uh, the, this is my Stata version. Yours may be 14 or whatsoever. Once you come to this folder, you click Ado, which is also available on the instruction. If you notice, you click Ado, okay, click base. And then you go all the way down, you look for alphabet letter T. This is the one, letter T, click on it. And you just paste the threshold rec dot edu and threshold test dot edu into this folder. I've already pasted it, so I'm not doing it anymore. Uh, so these are the two files that are also available on your Google Drive. You place these two files into this folder and that should do the work. Is everyone clear? Okay, I'll stop sharing right now, I suppose. Everyone's clear. If there's anyone who is still not quite sure how to do it, uh, please let me know.
And in the meantime, we'll wait for Dr. Zhu to come back. Okay, thank you.
Okay. Can we continue? Doctor, still down, only downloading the Stata app software. Okay. Yes, okay, okay. not software is now. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Uh, for those who have a problem to install the Stata, uh, no need to worry. Uh, in my site, actually, I've prepared you uh, the command step, uh, the command for you to follow step by step to get the same result as mine. No need to worry. Okay, maybe you need time to install, and maybe you need to find out uh, which uh, installer suitable with your uh, your desktop or laptop. Uh, you can do it later. So for those who can install it, maybe you, maybe you can uh, what do we call that. Uh, you can you, you can follow the hands on, but never for those who are still facing the problem to install, but would be fine. Uh, fix it later, and if let's say you have a problem uh, uh, or something to ask uh, when you do your own homework later, I am welcome you to come and see me personally in my office. Is it okay? Okay, let me con let us continue. So I share you the now. Okay.
Okay, right. Okay, now we're back to the topic. Okay, example. I've given I I assume you <clears throat> I assume that all of you have the data set that I uh that uh James already emailed to all of you. And I assume that you have already installed uh the stata and also uh upgrade your stata uh with the the tools that need for test analysis for those who have the problem uh you can take fix it later if you have uh, if you want to come and see me personally to have further consultation i'm welcome for that okay in this case i use uh the sample of indonesia malaysia and thailand the period from 1993 to 2000 to 2020 and then i use the basic model that proposed by kins okay by kins and then I select the threshold model oil price due to Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand, uh, 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 and all importer, uh, so on, on, and all producer countries. Okay, that, that's the reason. So, just for a basic understanding, I choose this case. Okay, I choose this case as our uh, our, our subject, our our sample to understand more how the threshold work. Okay. So we want to know how the regressor, how the factor of CIG and XX to influence GDP if let's say when the oil price is high or when price is low. <laughs> okay, now, so the first thing that you need to, to, to do is that you need to, uh, what do we call, to import your data in the stata okay the stata and then we get this okay non variables uh 84 observations okay i pass it into the data editor okay and then after that you need to type this x p s e t code and year once you call uh, when you type this command you will have this so this is the character of your data set either you are your data set is in uh in unbalanced or balanced nature okay and then the next step uh the next step is this you uh, you need to convert it into uh long uh, in, into log natural log okay these are the common command okay so bear in mind i think this one should be okay i think it's easier for you to understand what i mean so now i want to give a, uh, a focus on uh net export so some variable are negative right so how to deal with okay what you need to do is this you need to get the minimum value for an x okay you put it here okay the command is jen generate this is the name of the new variable okay and then you put ln the command here and x plus the minimum value if you can see the minimum value, you ignore the sign. And then, you, as you can see here, actually, you still can, uh, you still can uh, use the exact value without sign. But in this side, my normal practice, normally, I will add on some value. Like this one, right? 1.80e plus 14. Normally, I will add one, another one, uh, another so-called or one unit something right one unit something then you can generate the ln why we need to do this because we do not want a negative value in our data set because if we have a negative value it is difficult for us it is impossible for us to convert into the log okay like that okay after that Okay, now we go to the uh, example of the threshold test or non-linearity test, like this one. The command is this. In order for you to use this command, you need to uh, copy and paste the two files that I've given to you just now. That one for the general uh, threshold analysis. Okay, this is the... This is actually the what do we call that? Uh, the the model, uh, the 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 command, and then you will get this. So refer back to the table that I've given. 
uh, from my paper. Okay, this is the value, the bootstrap value, the bootstrap p-value, this one. So as you can see this one, significant, right? Meaning to say that the threshold effect is exit in our model. This is what it means. So if the threshold is exit in our model, mod, uh, in our model uh, so another question is that the turning point, the threshold value, okay, the, the threshold value is this, 3.6305429 in log term. So remember that our value, yeah, our, uh, what do we call that? Our uh, threshold value, uh, our threshold value is all price. So this is, this is actually stand for the all price series. Okay. After that, you will have this. So as I told you just now, in we can get the what do we call it? The the we actually can uh, identify okay whether we have a threshold effect or non-linear 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 effect in our model through this statistical number, or we can illustrate into a graph. In this case, definitely we uh, we are very sure that our model just have only one threshold because it just only the the graph here tangent with the red line once only, not twice. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Next, once we are confident or have a statistical support to say that our model should be treated as nonlinear, okay, in this case, uh, threshold, then we can regress. Okay. This is the command to regress. Okay, LY, dependent variable, and then it followed by independent variable. And then Q is the code for uh, independent variable. And then H1 stands for what? H1 is how many thresholds that we want to apply. So in this case, there's only one. So you can try two or three, but then what can I say? Uh, in the real practice, in the real world, uh, due to the data limitation that we have, it is quite impossible for us to have more than two, more than one threshold variable. Okay, and then okay, you can get this result. Okay, first global oil, uh, oil estimation. This is linear estimation. Okay, bear in mind the output here just give you the coefficient and then the standard error. So in order for you to know whether, uh, in order for you to know whether the that one, in order for you to know whether the coefficient is significant or not, you need to compute the t test. The t test, you can uh, the way you compute the t test, your coefficient value divided by standard error, you get the t test, and then how to know whether it is reject or do not reject, you need to refer to the T distribution table. Okay, so you can get your the, the information of your observation here. Degree of freedom, as I told you, we are looking for degree of freedom to ensure to to confirm that our model are free from the pressure of uh, degree of freedom. Okay, so linear. So we proceed to the threshold effect. So from this one, as you can see, the regime one. So this is the the estimation estimation for our uh, for our model. So if let's say our if let's say our what do we call it? If let's say our uh, what will happen if let's say our regressor below then this threshold, the value of this threshold, this we are expecting the coefficient to be like this. So uh, let me check. For well, this one, not significant. C is not significant. I is not significant. G is not significant. Uh, sorry. 
i is significant g is not significant and x is not a is significant so in this case regime one below the threshold i and s x on uh significant with positive and negative sign respectively okay and then we can uh now we look at the situation where uh our eraser okay above the threshold value so as you can see here this is the magnitude so according to the statistic to say that c is significant i is not really significant weakly significant uh, g also not that significant uh, and x is significant okay the way we know i repeat it again from where we know whether it is significant or not we need to compute the t okay the t the t test and then you uh, you just simply divide okay the coefficient divide by the standard error and you get it so this is the observation okay right that is the that is the basic uh that is the basic uh one that is the basic uh what do we call that uh that is the basic uh time series uh the threshold analysis equation now so now we go for this okay now i want to tell you what is the difference between this okay what is the difference between threshold regression the general threshold regression and fixed effect threshold regression if we use the threshold regression like we have done here <clears throat> this one we actually actually split our observation into two regime one and regime two but if we use this fixed effect threshold regression no need for us to split our regression because in this case in this model or in this technique we just want to know how the threshold effect affect only one variable that one variable we call as regime dependent so if you have a good knowledge on moderating model same thing okay if you refer to the moderating uh, moderating technique right it is a pair how the one variable to affect indirectly another variable and consequently affect the dependent variable same thing so in this case case okay, as you can see we use the same model but then now actually we are not going to split it so now we pair it so now we want to see so not sorry correction this one is not mp but op how the all uh, what will happen uh with consumption if let's say all price uh above the threshold or below the threshold same goes to the i g and n x and so on this is the basic model that we want to choose so in this case actually as compared to the previous model this model we need to check one by one okay so actually it depends on the and and it's, it, it is actually depends on your topic uh or your research uh research uh scope if let's say your scope concern on one type of uh variable to cause the dependent then you need to use this you can use this but be in mind for this uh technique you just can use the balance panel data so the other one if let's say you are interested to know the uh, changes of all regressor in one time then you use the general uh threshold regression so let us go to the application all right so now the first thing that we need to do we need to test the threshold the, the we need to test the threshold effect or threshold test or another word in a general word we call it as a non-linearity test so this is the command as you can see here right in the end of the command no reg no regression this is what it means so we just want to know the threshold effect so this is the command so rx is our regime dependent qx is the threshold variable okay <laughs> so we we use this command this is the model okay like example now huh? i get i i i back to our previous slide like this one this is the model okay so we trace like this so we found this 
So now actually, uh, please, pay, give, give, please give pay attention on this. Okay, now we use the, our series is in term of log, natural log. Okay, if you use the natural log like this, this is the result. So I just want to test. Okay, in this case, if you refer to the F test, okay, 5.85 something, the probability do uh, is not significant. Means that our non hybridities is not significant. Mean to say that to use this data set in natural log, okay, in the nature of natural log, we found that the threshold effect is not evident. But now, again, we are interested to know the threshold effect. It's quite uh, disappointed for us to find that in the end, or oh, no uh, threshold effect. How about if, let's say, we use the absolute value? Okay, look at uh, this case. This one, we use natural log. How about if, let's say, we use the absolute value? Okay, the absolute value give us different uh, conclusion. You see? The F test here and the probability is 0 0.0, 0, 0 0.0333, meaning to say that we uh, have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis to say that actually we have the threshold effect. Our model need to use the uh, the, uh, the non-linear approach. So in this case, actually, I just want to tell you, actually, you need to check. Okay, either we want, if let's say we want to use the non, uh, the, the uh, if let's say we want to use the, 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 the data set in the form of non-linear, uh, uh, natural log, so we need to use linear. You can, we can, you cannot proceed with uh, non-linear threshold. But then if you use the absolute value here, you actually can proceed with the threshold uh, analysis or threshold regression. Now we try both. To use non uh, to use natural log uh, data set or absolute data set would be fine. Okay, example like this one. We start with this. <clears throat> okay, we start with this. Okay, as you can see here, I use the natural log. Okay, natural log. The data the data that we have converted to log. Okay, this is the textual value. You need to convert it in order for you to know the exact value for that. Okay, and then this is the coefficient. This is the control variable. So this one, what does it mean? This is actually the, value, the coefficient value for regime dependent. So zero stands for regime dependent below threshold. One stands for Regime, uh, regime dependent above threshold. This is what you mean. So if you look at the result, still not so good. Why? You see the regime dependent here, both insignificant. So again, back to the, in the initial test, the nonlinearity test just now, we found that it is not significant. So meaning to say that if we want to conduct based on the information that we have, based on the sample that we have, the, the data that we have, actually, it cannot be conducted in uh, by converting to uh, natural law. This is what it means. So now we back to use the, uh, what do we call that, uh, absolute. We use the absolute data. We do not want to convert. We do not want to use the data in term of natural log. Now we back to the absolute one. Fine. Okay, we found this. Okay, the threshold value 61. So this is the exact value of oil price. Okay, no need for us to convert because we use the convert it to uh, absolute value. That is the absolute value. So now you can see the result is so called perfect. You can see here the control variable is significant, all significant with positive sign. Accordingly, okay, it is according to what Keen said. All uh, actually, all variables should be in a positive sign, right? So, but then if you look at the non-linear uh, uh, dimension, okay, you see zero stand for the consumption below threshold, below uh, threshold value, and the one here is the consumption. Uh, below and above. Okay, now one is above the uh, 
uh, what do we call above the threshold value, then we found it's significant, it's positive. So in the previous uh, model, uh, the general uh, general uh, threshold regression, so that one did not provide us p-value, but for this one, they provide us p-value. That is easier for us to know whether it is uh, our null hepatitis is rejected or not. That's what it means. So for me, the data is quite fair. Okay. So, and then, okay, maybe in your mind, want to ask me, so why we want to convert, why in a normal practice, we want to convert our natural, our absolute number to the, uh, what do we call it? <coughs> uh, in a natural, uh, in a log, in a natural log, in the form of natural log, due to what? First, not first, one of the thing that we are concerning actually, our variable, independent and dependent variable have a different scale. Sometimes it's too, if we compare the value, uh, the, the variable, uh, independent variable and dependent variable are too small sometimes. So that's why we need to standardize. The first, the, the basic way, uh, one of the basic ways is that we convert to into the natural law. So other advanced way, we normalize it. <clears throat> We normalize all our uh, variable, dependent and independent variable, we normalize in one single scale. So that one, no need for us to convert to log. Okay, but then another question here, in order, how are we going to interpret it using uh, Ceteris Paribus example estimation? So we need to know the value. That's why it is not very common for us to use the normalized equation. And so the normalized value. Okay, the uh, the natural log or other type of log, the best log still acceptable. So in this case, we found uh, to use skins using the absolute data is better. Why? Maybe, maybe most of the variable like Y, C, I, G, and X okay, has the same scale of number. Okay, not that uh, the the difference in terms of the value not that huge, so just only all price is too small. Then fine, for me it's fine because we just employ the all price as our threshold benchmark, not as a one of our regressor. Then fine. That's why for me, uh, I believe that. It worked for us to use absolute value in this case due to the consistency of our data. So that's why we can come up with a perfect, perfect uh, output or perfect statistical result. Okay, now we proceed to another, uh, another, another. What do we call this one? Another, another model. Okay, just now. We employ C as our regime dependent. Now we employ I. C become our control variable. So first we need to check again. Okay, I, I then we, we first check again. So now in this round, no natural log. We use absolute, right? So you see, threshold, single threshold, significant. Am I right? So, but then if you use natural log data set, it is insignificant. Okay, again, we proceed to the estimation, okay, to use the natural log data set. The reason is not that convincing. Okay, the reason is not so convincing, be, be, uh, even though some, uh, some of the, uh, like the our origin dependent significant. But if you look at uh, another control variable like natural, uh, like uh, net export here, it is insignificant. So how about the consumption? Weakly significant. Okay, so for me, again, I believe that the nature of the data actually uh, allow us to use the absolute value rather than we convert it in, uh, in natural log. Okay, again, so this is the result. If we employ the, invest, uh, the I, as our regime dependent, you see, 
how perfect is our result. <laughs> it is not against the theory, but in term of the in term of the magnitude, then we can know that if let's say the oil price is high, this is the behavior of our aggressor to affect GDP. So if let's say uh, oil price is low and that one, the behavior of our aggressor to cause our GDP. This is what it means. But again, I remind, I, I highlight you again here, if you use the fixed effect threshold analysis, you just need, you just you just only can uh, employ regime dependent one by one, not multiple regime dependent. But in previous technique just now, you can put all regressor as your regime dependent. Okay, again, I repeat it again uh, to employ G as, uh, as my uh, regime dependent. And then the result uh, to use the log, uh, to use the natural log, the result is not convincing. Same thing, it's consistent with my assumption. So I use again, got no I here, I got no L here. Okay, means that we use the, the absolute data. The result is good. Okay, and then proceed with the i proceed again with the what do we call that uh, i proceed again with the estimation here to use the natural log data set see the result is not so convincing right so okay fine again i repeat it i, I repeat the same technique i use this absolute value then i found this perfect okay so, okay, now I give you one example, the way you can, uh, what do we call that, uh, elaborate your result uh, in interesting way, example like this one. Huh? So in this case, we apply, uh, we employ G as our region dependent. So if you look here, right, if let's say the oil price is low, the oil price is low, then the magnitude effect of uh, government expenditure on GDP bigger than when the oil price is high. This is what I mean. Meaning to say that if let's say the price is low, then we do not have much pressure on price factor or inflation factor. Even though Malaysia, right? Even, even though Malaysia is a oil, oil producing country, but then we still uh, uh we still uh affected with high with uh a high oil uh international oil price this is what it means so when it's high the magnitude become low this is what it means okay the last one we use the uh uh, net net export as our region dependent here, okay. To check the uh, non-linearity test, okay. Uh, in this round, we use the natural log data set, and then again, it's consistent with my assumption before. So defining uh, to say that if we use the natural log as data set, no. We would we couldn't find the threshold effect, but if you use absolute, this is the finding. So that is. So we proceed to uh, to our estimation. So if we use the uh, the uh, the natural log assumption here, this is the result. Still not convincing, as I told you. So if you look at the uh, our uh, what do we call that uh, regime dependent here. It's not significant. So nothing much to tell. There is no, no interesting story that you want, you want to sell to the reader. Uh, that's the thing. So, but when we use the absolute uh, data set, value data set, we find this. The result is, the result is perfect. Okay, now, uh, one good finding that I want to share you, if you look at the uh, regime dependent here, right? Regime dependent here. When the oil price is low, the magnitude impact, 
the coefficient, the value of coefficient for net for the net export is very small. But then when the oil price is high, the magnitude impact is much more greater than when uh, oil price is low due to what? This country actually uh, export more oil and gas product. When the, the oil, the price of oil and gas, uh, the price of oil increase in international market, then definitely it will give us much more return okay, to drive our GDP to into trend to increase. This is what it means. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, for this boss technique, actually you can do it on your own. You just follow. Um, you just follow my slide. Uh, I will give uh, the slide after this, and then James again try. Uh, please uh, email to the others. Okay. So. And then how about this dynamic? We actually can uh, conduct a dynamic threshold regression model, but then it's, it's difficult in term of what? First, we need a uh, stata cannot, uh, cannot, cannot do the dynamic threshold because there is no command yet to deal with dynamic threshold uh, regression model. The only software that we can use for dynamic threshold regression is the MATLAB. And then the MATLAB, MATLAB here is not really friendly user. So even though there is a command for us to run, to do a dynamic threshold analysis regression, but still uh, we got some other step that we need to do manually. Example, to create the lag uh, variable. Why we need to create the lag variable? Because dynamic. Okay, the dynamic we need uh for the dynamic technique, the dynamic model we need to put the lag variable first. Second, we need to have a very, very long T for one country. Not like example, uh, if you have five countries, okay, and then your T uh maybe just only 20. So 20 times five is 100. Okay, if you use static, you can assume that your observation is 100. But if you use dynamic, your observation is 20. So in that, uh, for, for dynamic technique, actually you actually not going to pull it in become one set of data. The dynamic still capture the T. How long is your T? The longer, the better. So that's why. Uh, <clears throat> Up to now, <clears throat> my observation, okay, my my uh, my not not so really have a very long experience on this, but my con uh, my experience. If you want to do dynamic threshold regression or other dynamic method, at least you need to have twenty seven or twenty eight years for T, and then. Regardless how much, how many country that we have, how many more uh, uh, sample that we have, the T must be at least twenty seven or twenty eight. Then you can proceed with the regression. You need to you need to consider another thing: your independent the numbers of your independent variable. The more independent variable you have, the shorter the uh, degree of freedom that you have in your hand. That is the thing. So maybe in this, uh, I'm so sorry for this session. It is impossible for me to show you, to discuss you, uh, the how to conduct dynamic threshold regression model because it needs more time. I think uh, need a day because we there there is a lot of step that we need to do manually, like in terms of to compose the lag value. To compose the the coding itself, even though the coding itself, we need to we need to con, uh, we need to compose our own coding. Then we can put in the MATLAB, and then MATLAB can understand the information provided by us. Then we can run the uh, dynamic threshold regression. But so far, the dynamic threshold regression in the literature is not that popular. I believe that due to its difficulty uh, to conduct the 
the analysis on the dynamic threshold, uh, dynamic threshold regression model. All right, I we have around 15 to 20 minutes for q and A. I will come for any question if let's say you want to ask anything or uh, for the explanation. Any question? The status of a... Uh, not uh okay amira uh, the status of uh, no not yeah. not to replace, not to replace. at least mm -hmm. as, as its own uh, uh advantage so each uh uh each of the software actually has its own uh advantage and uh strength and weaknesses so, uh, so we according to our research lab we use which one is it like that okay. According to our research, uh, we have to pick which one not to use, not just one. One can all uh, no. no one software. Uh -huh. So okay. if you want, if for for cost section, actually, it's better for you to use the uh SPSS, As, especially if let's say you deal with the dummy or the scale. Uh, I mean the dummy or the like something that cannot be be measured by number, but then you rank it. Uh, then SPSS is better. Uh, if you want to, uh, you want to, what do you call it? Uh, you are interested on the behavior, the feeling, the behavior, the satisfaction. Definitely SPSS is better than Stata and uh, EViews. Uh, okay, the PowerPoint. Okay, I will give to uh, James. Uh, can you email to them my slide? Yeah, sure. I'll I'll paste the uh, um the slide on the Google Drive so anyone with the link can just access. Yeah, okay, I just yeah, I just uh, I just give it to you the slide, then you put it there. All right, no problem. All right. So, any other question? So the slide will be put at the Google Drive link just now, lah. Is it James? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Hello. Okay, Hello? I copy it. Hello. Thank you. Yes. Hello, uh, Dr. Zizul. Yes, Hazik. Uh, yes, uh, I'm Hazik. Um, yes, is it possible for us to um, uh, use the negative value for the uh, for the variable? You mentioned that you do all natural logs, right? And then uh, you mentioned that it's not possible for us to uh, log if it was if the value was negative. So if we do the semi semi log, is it possible for us to do this method or not? The what the the semi log. But there, there are some variable if locked and some variable is not locked. I, I, I can get it. The, the, your, your outcome is in terms of lock where? Uh, if, if our variable, if not all are natural locks, some of natural locks, some of not, uh, was not uh, natural uh, locks. Okay. Uh, econometrically speaking, so if you use lock or like best lock, all must be in the same, uh, uh, all must be, should be uh, in the same value or best uh, lock value. So the consistency is very important in econometrics. So you cannot, you cannot, uh, you cannot like maybe some uh, some of the paper they use like okay they use the natural log. Some of the variable use the natural log, and the other variable they use percentage. Uh, they assume that the natural log is percentage. No, the natural log, natural log is not in term of the percentage in the nature of percentage. So even though you mix the natural log and percentage, also not in a good way, but in some situation, people still can accept that one. If let's say due to the data limitation and everything, but then you need to, uh, you need to, <clears throat> you need to report that due to the data limitation, and this is the best way that we can do up to now. Then fine, but it economically speaking, so the data must be consistent. The nature of the data must be consistent. If you use the natural log. All must be natural log. If let's say you use the log best, like best log, like 10, 5, 2, all must be 10, 5, 2. If you use the absolute value, then all must be in absolute value. Even though the scale itself, sometimes got one variable, got one series uh, in million, got one series not in million, exact it is, right? Even though, even though that type of mod, uh, that type of series, you cannot pull it all together. 
If in million, all must be in million. If absolute value, all must be in absolute value. This. Okay, understood. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> all right. Any other question? Thank you, Masha. So I welcome to, uh, for those who want to have uh, uh, further consultation. Uh, you can uh, you can make an appointment uh, to me. You can have my email uh, to make an appointment uh, in my office. Would be fine. Any other question? We still have uh, two minutes to ask any question. So in the meantime, I email James the slide. We have two slides today. So Okay, I've already uh, emailed to you, James. You can proceed. Uh, you can uh, forward to others. Okay, all right. Thank okay, you. Then, the Google Drive, yeah. Just yeah. access the link. Yes. Hopefully, it can help you a bit. Just be careful. My advice is that uh, be careful with the uh, that one. Uh, be careful with the uh, the procedure. Okay. In my slide, in my first slide, we need to follow the procedure. If not, uh, the, the review will question you uh, if you miss uh, some of the, the important procedure to, uh, to conduct the, what do we call that? The, what do we call that one? Um, quantitative research. So I have one question here. What is the most popular method for, for index construction? Uh, in that construction, in case more than sorry, in case more than ten indicator. Oh, so if we are, uh, if let's say you want to uh, develop an index, uh, the first thing, the most important thing is the wettage. So if you do, if unwettage one, people will question you how reliable is your, uh, how reliable is your idea. Okay, or your framework. That's the first thing. So now, how, how many uh, indicators that you have is not a matter. The most important thing is your basic idea, your, the, your basic framework. Okay, your basic framework. And then how real, uh, uh, the power of that, uh, uh that uh indicator to represent your idea or the real world uh in or in the real how how can it be how can it practice in the real world for so if let's say you want to compose uh, or develop an index wettage is very important if let's say unwettage one then it's example that's the problem if let's say you have more than one indicator more than 10 indicators then unwettage one definitely uh you are not going to have a good uh index value so for me, got no 
not much uh not got not much matters you can do for me even though if you if let's say you want to have 10 indicators that one is quite uh uh quite a lot already so you try to my advice to you you need to think about more dimension like 10 indicator uh, you try to come up with the idea to split this 10 indicator into two to three dimensions so that you have one dimension you maybe have less than three or four then would be enough if let's say you do not have information uh on the unweightage one everything then quite difficult we have 12 indicator and split into three dimension 12 indicator for me if you split into three you got four 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 you will have four indicators right that's the maximum um four yes that's i think the maximum you can go try not to have more than four okay i think uh, even four is quite a lot really it's quite a lot i am i i am i just uh curious letter it will affect the power of your estimation four indicator in one dimension yeah for me it's quite a lot but i think if that think that's the best thing you can do uh, uh please make sure four indicator is the maximum one do not try to put five or more than five so it will affect the power it will it will give an uh, it will uh, make it, it actually will affect your estimation i mean the power your the power of estimation there is questionable okay another 5 minutes okay the pca so uh the P uh frankly speaking pca is quite all method so my advice to you is better for you to try to uh to uh to look at uh, try to use the min max method that is the newest one up to now most of the paper use that one rather than pca i advise you to use that one and then think about the weightage and unweightage because you develop an index that one is very important any other question five more minutes ish panjang ya dmba muhammad thank you for such a thank you basically on the model specification <laughs> uh i tried dynamic uh dynamic using the code you mentioned just now right uh yeah it's not work for uh it's not work for theta for for theta uh the threshold analysis uh just only applicable in theta for static uh for static uh for static uh technique only for dynamic one up to now you need to use dynamic dynamic as i told you is very uh it's complicated <clears throat> and that is complicated actually you need to we we need to prepare the coding we need to prepare the new the new the new variable and then we need to put in in it language then we can put in the matlab uh, that's the problem if math language i think it's still achievable but now it language uh, then that makes time for us to prepare the the coding that's the problem so uh we need at least half day four to five hours to do just only dynamic that's crazy thank you masha okay three more minutes <clears throat>
पहले माशा ट्राई टू रिक्वेस्ट द फैकल्टी ओके वेलकम ओके ओके फाकेर होपफुली वी हैव अनदर अपॉर्चुनिटी यस माशा प्लीज डोंट रिफर टू द फेसबुक एंड यूट्यूब माय एडवाइस टू यू यू नीड टू रिफर टू द द ओरिजिनल आर्टिकल प्लीज डोंट वी वी प्लीज डू नॉट रिलाइ मच ऑन फेसबुक एंड यूट्यूब Okay. Okay, me. Another one minutes. Uh, Fana, are you kita siapa? Siapa? Siapa Fana ka? Okay. Uh, that's all for me. Before I'm leaving, I would like to say uh, thank you for your, for your, for for your interest. Uh, to. To attend my uh, workshop, and then I'm sorry if let's say uh, uh, I couldn't deliver uh, my uh, presentation well. And I really hope that uh, you can use uh, this technique for your research, especially your your master or your PhD or your publication. And again, I really really welcome you uh, to meet me personally in my office. To discuss further, if let's say you need more advice and you need more information, I really, really welcome uh, uh, for that. Okay, I wish you good luck, and I wish you for those who still struggling for PhD and master. I wish you, uh, you. I wish you that you can. Uh, the God will easy your journey. <laughs> yeah, I know it is very difficult to deal with many people. It's very difficult. Then keep on praying. Okay. So that's all for me. Thank you so much. I give the floor back to Fahana. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Zul, and thank you very much, everyone. Uh, for the postgraduate student, I will share the recorded session to Dr. Ashraf from people from outside Unimas. If you want the recording, you can email me ifarhana at unimas.my to request the recorded version. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you in the next uh, upcoming research workshop. Okay, bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, bye. bye. You can email me ifarhana at ilmas.my. I will type at the chat. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And email me tomorrow. Ah, <laughs> tomorrow I will share the recording. Thank you. Okay, bye everyone.